In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a 12 volt solar system. That is how to connect a 12 volt solar system. Now we have here a 180 watt solar panel. This is a monocrystalline solar panel and it is 36 cells. Then we also have 100 amps hour lead acid battery. It is a deep circle battery and it is 100 amps hour. Then here we have our 1000 watts inverter. It is a 12 volt inverter because the system we are connecting is a 12 volt system. This is a 12 volt battery. So any inverter we are connecting here must be a 12 volt inverter. If we want a want to connect a 24 volt inverter to this system, it means we are going to use two batteries and we connect the batteries in series to give us 24 volts. But for this setup, it is a 12 volt system. So we are using a 12 volt inverter and it is 1000 watt, 12 volt to AC, 230 volts. Then we have our solar charge controller. You can see the controller, it is uh, 40 amps uh, solar charge controller. Then the rated voltage is, the rated voltage is 12 volts and uh, 24 volts. It means you can connect this charge controller to a 12 volt system or a 24 volt system. It is automatic once it sends the voltage that is 12 volt, the solar charge controller will on, it will work. If it is a 24 volt system, it will sense that voltage and also work. But you cannot connect this charge controller to a 48 volt battery bank. It is only for 12 volts and 24 volt battery bank. So it will not work if you connect it to a 24 volt, a 48 volt battery bank. And you can see the maximum PV input power for 12 volts. The maximum PV input power is 520 watts. For 24 volts, the maximum PV input power is 1040 watts. And this charge controller is a PWM solar charge controller. Now, if you look at the terminals here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six terminals. The first two here are for the PV input. You can see the solar uh, sign there. For some other charge controllers, they will write PV positive, PV negative. That is, PV there is photovoltaic. So here we have positive, negative. Then here is the battery input where you connect the battery. Uh, that's if you want to link the solar charge controller to the battery bank, you connect the positive of the battery here the negative of the battery here. Some charge controllers, you see BAT positive, BAT positive, BAT negative. The BAT there stands for battery. Then this side here is for load. If you want to connect a DC load to this charge controller, maybe a 12 volt or 24 volt load. So you need to look at the voltage of that load. If you are using a 12 volt battery bank, it means you need a 12 volt load to connect here. If you are using a 24 volt battery bank, then you can connect a 24 volt load to here um, this uh, charge controller so we also have our ac load uh, this is our bulb because uh, this bulb is ac so that's why we need the inverter to convert the dc that is stored in the battery bank to ac remember what the solar panel is generating is dc what is stored in the battery bank is also dc and we want to power this ac load so we need an inverter to convert this DC energy to AC energy. That is why you see it is written here DC 12 volts to AC 230 volts. So the solar charge control, I mean, uh, the inverter will convert the DC to AC. Then we have our cables. This one will connect them, connect these cables from the, from the inverter to the battery bank. That is, we use cables to link all these components together. So if we are connecting the charge, I mean, uh, the inverter to the battery bank, we need these two cables. They are positive and negative. You can see them red and black. This is the input side of the inverter, the DC input side of the inverter. You can see red here stands for positive, black stands for negative, and you can see the signs there, plus and minus. So always be mindful of the polarity, all these positive and negative signs, so that you will not mix them up. If you mix them, you can destroy either the charge controller or the inverter or you can even destroy your battery so be careful when you're doing the connection be mindful of this polarity take them into consideration 
Then we have another cable here that we are connecting to, that is between the battery bank and the charge controller. We also need a cable to link the charge controller to our battery. So this is the cable we are going to use. You can see the locks there, the cable locks. The essence of this cable locks is to fit this uh, cable firmly on the terminals of the battery. So I'm going to show you the steps we are going to take to connect, to set up this 12 volt system. So the first step is that we are going to connect the solar charge controller to the battery bank. Now, this is the rule. When you are connecting your solar charge controller, don't connect the solar panels to the charge controller before connecting to the battery. Always connect the solar charge controller to the battery first before you connect your solar panel. Then when you want to disconnect, disconnect the solar panel first before disconnecting uh, the battery. Don't, don't uh, connect the panels first before, that is connecting the solar panels to the charge controller before connecting your battery bank to this charge controller. That can destroy the solar charge controller. It will destroy the internal circuits of the charge controller. So connect the charge controller to the battery first. The charge controller will sense the battery bank voltage. Then it will uh, stabilize itself before you now connect your uh, solar panels. So that is the first rule you need to know. If you mix it, you can destroy your charge controller. So we are going to do the first thing. But since we are also connecting this inverter to the battery bank, we are going to do the connection together. That is both the charge controller and the inverter will connect them at the same time to the battery bank. So we'll take the negative, the positive. We are going to connect them. This is the positive. So this is what we'll do. Inverters have their different setups, so always read the manufacturer manual to know uh, how uh, you can connect the inverter. You can properly connect the inverter so that you don't have issues. So always read the manufacturer's manual. The manual there is the mind of the manufacturer. He's not there when you're connecting it, but from the manual, you can read the mind of the manufacturer and know what the manufacturer needs and how to connect his uh, uh, device. So the next thing is that we are going to connect these ones to our charge controller. This is the charge controller and these are the cables. So we connect the positive first to the charge controller. This is the positive and we are going to connect it to this positive terminal. So when you're connecting, make sure it is firm. Tight it very firm. Yes. Then we will now take the positive and connect together with the positive of our inverter. You can see the positive of the inverter, the positive of the charge controller. So we are going to connect them uh, together. Oh, sorry, I mixed the heads. These boots cannot pass, so going to remove it so always check you can see these 13 boots cannot pass here so this one here is for the inverter input terminal so you can see them this head here this cable lock here is bigger than this side here so Go again. So, positive of the inverter, positive of the charge controller. This is our cable. I mean, uh, our boat. We're going to tie it here. Our knot. We're going to firmly tie it here. You can see it. it should be very strong. You can. Let's, uh, strong and we now take the negative we're going to connect the negative to the charge controller make sure you tight it very strong
Yeah. Then we lose this one. We also take the negative of the inverter, the negative of the charge controller. When you want to connect this other terminal to the battery bank, it may spark. If the battery bank is fully charged, you can hear the spark there. Tie it very strong. So you can see that the charge controller is on and the voltage of this battery, the charge controller is reading it. It is 12.6 volts. Well, is, there is no solar input, so you are, there is no sign of solar input, and the battery is not charging. So we are now going to connect the solar panels. These are the terminals of the solar panels, positive and negative. So we'll connect the negative terminal. Always take note of the polarity of the solar panels. Tie it strong. Then take the positive and connect it here. All right, for the solar side, the battery, the, the charge controller and the solar panel, they are working. The solar panel is charging the battery. You can see that from the charge controller. You can, it's also reading the, vote, uh, the temperature of the battery and the temperature of the battery is 27 degrees centigrade. So we are going to now test the AC side. We are done with the DC side. Let's test the AC side to see if the inverter uh, will convert the DC to AC. So we are going to switch on the inverter. This is the switch here, on and off. I hear the sound. So the inverter is on. We are going to connect our load, our AC load. To the inverter to see if it can power this load. Yeah, so you can see it, the load is on. It is on. So, this is a simple setup for, uh, you know, a 12 volt system. Let me test another bulb. This one is an LED bulb. Let me test this, uh, uh, what's it called, this tungsten bulb and see, you can see it, it's on. Now the energy consumption of this one is very high. So when you are doing your installation, you know, advise your clients, if these bulbs are in his house or her house, advise, advise the client to change these bulbs to LED bulb because the energy consumption of this one is very high and it can drain the battery bank uh, uh, down. The energy in the battery bank will drain it very fast. So let me test and see if my power bank will also charge. So this is my power bank. Okay, you can see there is, it's charging. Oh, okay, you can see it. My power bank is charging. All right. So this is how to set up a 12 volt system. Now there's something that is mixing here. And what is missing is protection. This system is not fully protected. So we need breakers. We need, uh, you know, fuse. We need such protective devices. You know, OCPDs, over current protection devices to, you know, protect this system. So without those devices, this system is not protected from, from over current, from, a, you know, a lightning strike and the rest. So for us to protect this system, we need to install protective devices between the solar panel and the charge controller, the charge controller and the battery bank, the battery and the inverter and the inverter, between the inverter and the AC loads, we need uh, protection. So uh, I also do a video. If you want me to do a video on protection, on how to install breakers and other protective devices, please let me know on the comment section and I will do a video on that.
So this is how to do the setup. If you're interested in my PDF on uh, step by steps on how to size a solar power system there, you learn how to size the cables, all the various components of a solar power system. If you have your daily energy consumption, how to size all the solar components, the cables, the breakers, the fuse, and other protective devices. Even if you want to incorporate a generator to a solar system, you can incorporate a generator. The generator will be charging the battery and also supplying you the power you need to run your loads. And the excess power will be used to charge the battery bank. So how to incorporate the generator and all that, they are inside the PDF. So you can download the PDF. It is not free. You will pay a little amount of money. That is to support me and also encourage my work. So just click the link on the description of this video to download the PDF. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed. See you in my next video.